how the Boring Company's tunnels work. According to Musk, to solve the problem of soul-destroying traffic, roads must go 3D, which means either flying cars or tunnels are needed. Unlike flying cars, tunnels are weatherproof, out of sight, and won't fall on your head. A large network of tunnels many levels deep would help alleviate congestion in any city. No matter how large a city grows, more levels can always be added. Created by Elon Musk, founder of Tesla and SpaceX, the Boring Company constructs safe, fast-to-dig and low-cost transportation utility and freight tunnels. Loop's public transportation solution is designed to be the fastest and safest system ever. But the question is, how will these tunnels work? Let's have a look. Four years ago, Elon Musk pitched a grandiose vision for the future of intra-city vehicle travel, layers of tunnels that would efficiently speed vehicles through cities. Drivers would maneuver their own Teslas to street-level elevators, which would lower them to be whisked away on autonomous electric sledges at speeds up to 120 miles per hour. Pedestrians and cyclists would ride in an autonomous electric vehicle that resembled a glass-plated train car. Musk's career is rich in accomplishments that have earned him a place in history. He made electric cars popular at Tesla and pioneered reusable rockets at SpaceX, which recently became the first private company to send astronauts to space. But he's also gained a reputation for making bold statements and not always living up to them. He created The Boring Company to pursue his transit vision. One of his projects, which features two-mile-long tunnels in Las Vegas, was completed in mid-2020. Passengers will enter a Tesla piloted by another human rather than ferried by autonomous sledges and be driven at a top speed of 35 miles per hour, according to Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority CEO Steve Hill. It was on stage in April 2017 at a TED Ideas conference that Musk showed an animated video of vehicles being lowered into tunnels on elevators that blended into curbside parking spots and sped through the city on electric sledges. He called this intracity transportation Project Loop and claimed its autonomous rides would be cheaper than the bus. 30 layers of tunnels in a city could probably completely fix the congestion problem in high-density cities, Musk said in November 2018. The system will rely on Tesla Model 3s and Xs, according to Hill, a tram built on Model 3 chassis that carries 12 to 16 passengers may be introduced later. He expects the vehicles will eventually drive autonomously once they're proven to be safe. Hill said he was not sure how long that would take. The Boring Company aims to develop a way of digging fast, low-cost tunnels to alleviate traffic congestion and enable rapid transit across densely populated areas. Musk's preference is to go underground versus flying cars as a safer, cleaner option, and the company doesn't see earthquakes as an issue, citing three seismic events in the last 30 years along the U.S. West Coast where no damage occurred. Tunnels, when designed properly, are known to be one of the safest places to be during an earthquake, the company said. From a structural safety standpoint, the tunnel moves uniformly with the ground, in contrast to surface structures. Additionally, a large amount of earthquake damage occurs from falling debris, which does not apply inside tunnels. So how can the cost be brought down? Well, the Boring Company said the idea is to reduce the tunnel diameter and place vehicles on a stabilized electric skate a flat plate on wheels propelled by an electric motor. This will bring the tunnel diameter down to 14 feet, effectively reducing its width by half and cutting costs by three to four times. The autonomous skate would have zero emissions and be capable of traveling at 201 kilometers an hour through urban areas as well as carry goods, cars, or a Hyperloop pod. The Boring Company said lowering the cost also involves upping the speed of the TBM by increasing its power, continuously tunneling, automating large TBMs, replacing current diesel locomotives with electric, and investing in research and development. While the technology is not quite there, it could be in a few years. However, real questions remain not only over whether Musk's idea is possible or safe, but perhaps more importantly, whether people actually want it. The project faces a number of issues, though. The first issue is that it's incredibly expensive. 
Developing the technology won't be cheap. The Boring Company has raised nearly $113 million, of which $100 million or so came from Musk to enact their projects. And then there's the question of who will be paying for these public transportation projects, the public themselves or the Boring Company. With current cuts to local government, funding in America and beyond, many local authorities will struggle to find the funds to invest in what many consider a vanity project. Moreover, how much will these tunnels cost to use? Musk claims that they will be affordable, but this is by no means guaranteed given the initial investment required. There are also significant engineering challenges. The concept of car elevators on skates come with a lot of engineering challenges, such as the reliability and safety of the elevator, loading and unloading times, and the number of dedicated areas in a city we'd need to do this at scale. For example, the Boring Company has so far failed to address the mechanics of the surface level points of entry and exit above the tunnel. Their suggested ramps could very easily cause jams. And what about the health and safety issues of having gaping holes in the middle of the road? Safety issues are something that seems to stand out the most with the Boring Company's ideas. Musk claims that he can build transportation-oriented tunnels faster and cheaper than current technology, but this is mainly because his machines will drill them at about half the diameter of current subway tunnels. This has huge safety risks. Regulations stipulate that tunnels must be at the very least 21.5 foot in diameter in order to leave enough space for people to escape the vehicle in an emergency. Musk has not addressed how he will make sure that his much smaller tunnels fit with the safety regulations and do not put people's lives at risk. The Boring Company originally proposed tunnels for personal vehicles. Musk, a resident of LA and founder of a private vehicle company, Tesla, still seems to have a private vehicle-oriented vision. However, most urban planning policy is shifting towards ending private vehicle use and encouraging greater public transport usage and a more outdoor lifestyle. There is now a widespread acceptance that the more capacity for cars you have, the more congestion you'll get. Although Musk recently shifted his plan and now specifies that the Boring Company will focus on offering transit service to pedestrians and cyclists. This requires the kind of mass vehicles that would not currently be safe in his tunnels. Perhaps the most pressing problem with Musk's proposal is that there's no evidence so far that people want these tunnels. Most sociological studies conclude that people like living in cities where they can access services easily on foot or by bike, where public transport services are timely, comprehensive, and well-serviced, and where traffic and air pollution are minimal. Although underground subway systems are integral to many large cities worldwide, who says that people would be happy to regularly travel around the city through tiny inescapable tunnels and individual or multi-person pods? This question leads us to the conclusion that Musk is not looking to follow inclusive, user-centric research and design models. Increasingly seen as the only way to create physical products or urban policies that are actually relevant to the people who live in cities, his new transportation proposal also fails to address the individual concerns and desires of different social groups, particularly those who are marginalized or vulnerable. For instance, women may not feel comfortable being confined to an autonomous vehicle, whether underground or overground controlled by a central computer or even potentially a male operator. People from low socioeconomic backgrounds may be concerned about being able to afford this transport option or about where stations will be placed as underprivileged neighborhoods are so often neglected when it comes to transit development. It remains to be seen whether similar green initiatives will pop up under other major cities. Perhaps in the meantime, we should be making use of those ancient tunnels built by our forefathers. Fathers. What's your take? Do you think The Boring Company will proceed in its quest to go underground? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe and turn on those post notifications.